Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie, and Marvel just revealed more details about Black Panther 3, and it turns out they're moving way faster on some of their new characters than we thought heading into Avengers Secret Wars, especially the new version of Black Panther after Shuri. I know most of you were split on her version of Black Panther. It seems like Marvel is getting rid of her faster than we thought, so we'll break it all down and why they're doing this. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. There's a brand new Deadpool and Wolverine trailer. It sounds like Marvel's going to release pretty soon, too. And we have all the X-Men coming back in X-Men 97 episodes. Of course, I'll do videos for that, too, because that also plays into what's happening during Black Panther 3. To me, my X-Men. Recently, Marvel also just confirmed they're doing Avengers Secret Wars during the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer. We assumed they would eventually, no big surprise there, and we knew they would do Black Panther 3 eventually, but they've been pretty quiet about that after Black Panther Wakanda Forever came out. So I think most of us assumed that they'd announce it at some point before Secret Wars. But because they kept delaying all their current movies, like Deadpool and Wolverine is the only MCU movie they're releasing this year, Secret Wars by default also kept getting pushed. This is when it looks like those are coming out now. And they just also announced that they're changing Avengers 5 and it wouldn't be Kang Dynasty. Now it looks like they're just doing a two-part Secret Wars movie and they'll change the titles of one of those movies eventually. Like Secret Wars Part 2 will be called Avengers Forever or something similar. And during that Black Panther Wakanda Forever post credit scene, when they revealed Chadwick Boseman's T'Challa had a child with Nakia, also named T'Challa, like young boy T'Challa, because that movie was meant to take place in 2025 in the MCU, Deadpool and Wolverine would be like MCU year 2026, even though that meant to start life in the Fox Marvel Universe, it's crossing over into the MCU. The whole idea is that not a lot of time is meant to be passing between Wakanda Forever, Avengers 5, and Secret Wars, just a handful of years inside the MCU. So at the time, most of us assumed that that young T'Challa would still be a relatively young teenager by the time Secret Wars rolls around, and they would just give him some kind of Azari-based storyline from the comics in the next Avengers, where he joins a young Avengers team. Like, they started setting up young Avengers in the Marvel's post credit scenes. What do you want? I'm putting together a team. And I want you on it. Hmm. And a lot of the early theories were that at least by like Black Panther 4, he'd be old enough to take the mantle of Black Panther from Shuri. And he would also take the mantle of King of Wakanda from M'Baku. And that movie would serve as a restoration of sorts with the T'Challa Black Panther sitting on the throne of Wakanda for like the next 20 to 30 years or however long the actor stayed in the MCU. But now, according to reports, the plot of Black Panther 3, still coming before the final Secret Wars movie, whatever they wind up calling that, and during the movie, Shuri is meant to pass the mantle of Black Panther down to T'Challa's son, and he'll become the new Black Panther. The synopsis just says pass the mantle down to the son of a king, but that's clearly a reference to T'Challa's son here, and the villain of the movie is just listed as her greatest enemies in the comics, which pays off a long-running fan theory too I'll talk about in a second. But if you remember, a couple of years ago, Ryan Coogler was talking about the story arc that it sounds like he's going to give to this younger T'Challa. He lost his father very young. And basically, he was like a boy king, you know, and, and then went away for a little while, came, you know, comes back and then inherits the throne as a young man. And by the time he's T'Challa's age in the MCU, he's been a king for a long time, you know, and, and been without a father for a long time, you know, and so, so that, that, that character was much, much different. And you know, so I was, I was trying to figure out how to how to incorporate these these you know these books uh, into into this story that 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 I was inheriting and trying to flesh out. The funny thing about that is that is a story arc that he actually envisioned for the original Chadwick Boseman version of T'Challa. Like basically a young Black Panther, young king dealing with the death of his father and what it means to be king of a nation and what it means to be Black Panther. When the original Black Panther movie came out, we made all the Lion King references. Now you can make those again, essentially, with the young T'Challa. Like, the circle is now complete. The circle of life. In talking more about the movie's villains, for the most part, Shuri's greatest enemies that they're listing here are Killmonger, who they've already changed the plot for a lot in the MCU. He's probably coming back, too. I'll talk about him in a second. There's Claw, who's already dead. Namor, who they already did in Wakanda Forever. And the greatest villain of hers that they haven't done yet in the MCU is Doctor Doom. So there's a real good chance that they finally pay off all the Doom War Easter eggs from Black Panther Wakanda Forever and the other parts of the MCU the last couple of years. 
A big part of Wakanda Forever was setting up the whole idea that the rest of the world was coming for Wakanda to take their vibranium. Val, President Thunderbolt Ross, will be trying to claim Tiamat in their resources found on the Dead Celestial during Captain America 4. That's supposed to be where adamantium is found. Also, during Wakanda Forever, Val kept talking to the government about them wanting all the vibranium. That was when President Ritson was still leading America. So even before Thunderbolt Ross becomes president of the United States, the previous U.S. president wants all of Wakanda's vibranium. And at the very end of Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Namor kept telling Namorita that he was waiting for the rest of the world to finally come for Wakanda and take their vibranium so that Shuri would seek his aid and he could use that war as an opportunity to kill all surface dwellers. Like, just you wait, it's gonna happen, they will eventually come for them and she'll turn to me for help. So they really wanted to play up this whole Doom War storyline. Doctor Doom, for instance, was originally meant to be the secret person behind the expedition at the beginning of that movie, searching for the underwater vibranium. Lake Bell's character was originally meant to be Lucia Von Barda from Latveria, who works for Doctor Doom in the comics. Marvel also revealed that they've been talking about introducing the Doctor Doom character to the MCU since their big story retreat last year, and they've been hyping him up in the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer. We're also supposed to see him at the very end of the new Fantastic Four movie, which takes place in the 1960s, which was just announced. They won't actually cast that new Doctor Doom actor until the very end of filming that movie because he's only going to appear briefly at the end of the film. I believe that Galactus is going to be a much bigger antagonist than, say, like, Doctor Doom. Like, they're not going to do the exact same storyline from the original Fantastic Four movies. But we've been talking about them trying to hype up Doctor Doom in the MCU and get people generally to just care about the character if they're going to use him so prominently in Secret Wars. The whole idea is that you have to use him a bunch of times in a bunch of movies in order to get people to really care about him. It makes sense that they want to do that. They make him one of the biggest antagonists in one of their biggest upcoming movies before Secret Wars. And if you think about what happened with Black Panther Wakanda Forever, they lost Chadwick Boseman, RIP. The general response on Wakanda Forever was kind of mixed, but the movie still did gangbusters financially. So imagine how much money Black Panther 3 would make if they do Doctor Doom and the new T'Challa became Black Panther during that film. Easily, easily over a billion dollars. I know there are a lot of people out there that were calling for Marvel to recast T'Challa, like bring us a version of T'Challa. They kind of did that in giving us his son, so they're not doing exactly what people were asking for, but it's pretty close to that idea. Like here's your new version of T'Challa. He's not quite old enough yet, but he'll get there. Turns out they're just moving a little bit faster on aging him up. And that Doom War storyline we keep referring to is exactly what it sounds like. During an era in the comics when Shuri had taken the mantle of Black Panther from T'Challa, he was still alive, he was still around, he just gave the mantle to Shuri. Doctor Doom essentially attacks Wakanda with his army with the intention of stealing all its vibranium so he can upgrade his technology, his Doombots, his own armor. He even tries to form his own contract with Boss the Panther Goddess. And the crazy thing about that storyline, it went so hard, is that Doctor Doom is successful. He actually does take all of Wakanda's vibranium and it makes him ultra powerful. Once he starts wearing his own vibranium armor, he says that it enables him to feel every particle of vibranium around the world. And the only solution that T'Challa can come up with to totally defeat him, like he's won, how do you defeat him now when he's this powerful, is to render all vibranium on the planet inert, basically making it all useless. So the big WTF there is that not only does Doctor Doom lose his advantage, all of Wakanda who depended on vibranium for tens of thousands of years for their superiority around the world loses that advantage too. So the idea is that Doctor Doom kind of slinks away into the shadows and they start rebuilding Wakanda and finding a way to survive without their vibranium. One of the other cool details is that by the time Black Panther 3 rolls around, you could also use X-Men during that movie too because we'll be so deep into Marvel Phase 6. Storm was a big part of that storyline and we're supposed to see Storm during What If Season 3. So it sounds like Deadpool and Wolverine is just the beginning of more X-Men showing up in the MCU. We're also getting the X-Men 97 episodes, even though that's taking place in another universe. Like, that's not meant to be in the main 616 universe. Black Panther even hired Deadpool to go after Doctor Doom during that. Pegging isn't new for me, friendo, but it is for Disney. The idea is that we're just rolling really hard on X-Men in the next several years. What you can also do, because we didn't get a chance to see Chadwick Boseman's T'Challa have a relationship with Storm like they did in the comics, like they get married in the comics and they have their son called Azari. 
you can actually just give that storyline to his son T'Challa so that as he gets older, he was the one that forms a relationship with Storm. So you can kind of see the moves that Marvel is making behind the scenes like, oh, okay, this starts to make a little more sense now. But because you still have that issue with the time gap, what they probably do is just wait a little while, then cast a totally different actor that's much older, but who can still play an older looking teenager. And they'll probably just hand wave on how many years have passed inside the MCU. They've been trying to do this with all their movies since Spider-Man Homecoming so that they don't run into another eight years later kind of problem. Like, what if we never reference what actual year it is, even though people ask the producers and the actors questions like that in interviews, and they have to give answers. So, for instance, there is an official Marvel timeline that the MCU people have published, but they don't really reference that very often in the actual movies, so it's much easier for them to hand wave on how much time has passed inside the actual movies. Really good example of this is Shuri in the MCU. She was in her early 20s during the events of Black Panther Wakanda Forever when she became the next Black Panther. The idea is she's meant to be about the same age as Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man, but remember, he got snapped, so now post-snap, she's five years older than him. But you get the idea. If you look at her, she looks pretty much the exact same age. You can just recast a young T'Challa who looks a little bit older and say they're 16, 18 years old. And he looked totally old enough to become the next Black Panther. How? It's never as important as why, right? A lot of you asking now, what about Killmonger coming back? Since they're probably not going to do a deep fake CG or AI version of Chadwick Boseman in the ancestral plane, that would feel kind of gross. Like, please don't try to do something like that. They can just do the same thing they did during Black Panther Wakanda Forever where it winds up being Killmonger's spirit that the young T'Challa winds up talking to. Where he imparts his own brand of wisdom, much more stabby wisdom, on the new T'Challa and it's part of his own internal struggle dealing with the death of his father, not being around, what it means to be king in Black Panther at the same time. And like the clip earlier in the video that I included of Ryan Coogler talking about his arc basically being a little bit like his father's arc when he became king in Black Panther at the same time. There's a bunch of other storylines that they set up at the end of Black Panther Wakanda Forever, like you have Okoye's storyline. There's supposed to be a Midnight Angels TV show they're working on. There's a Black Panther TV series that's supposed to come to Disney Plus later this year with a bunch of different characters they're introducing. We're even supposed to see one of the ancient versions of Iron Fist during that because that Black Panther TV show will jump across the timeline. So Marvel is rolling really hard on Black Panther. It'll be interesting to see what they do with the Shuri character after she passes the mantle down to this other new version of T'Challa. Everybody post all your reactions in the comments below, though. We'll find out more about what's going on with the movie in the next couple of years. It's still pretty early days. We just learned about Silver Surfer and Galactus coming back in Fantastic Four. Click here to learn about that, and click here for all my Deadpool and Wolverine trailer videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.